Friends, grace to you in peace this day from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So today's gospel is a story about healing, which is something Jesus does a lot of in the Bible. Except in most healing stories in the Bible, the healing comes at the end. It's the heart and the point of the story. Today's gospel is a little bit different. The act of healing takes place just seven verses into a 41-verse narrative. The healing isn't at the end of the story, it's at the beginning. And the healing isn't the resolution of the story, it's the setup. Because today's gospel isn't really a story about whether or not God's love can heal. It's a story about how we react to the healing love of God in our midst, whether we trust it or resist it, whether we react with fear or confusion or faith. The first reaction of the community to the healing of the man born blind today is skepticism. This guy looks like the guy who used to sit and beg on the street, but it can't possibly be him. And they ask him, tell us again how you were healed. And then we have religious leaders who interrogate the healed man, pressing him for unknowable details. They doubt him. They threaten him. They run back and forth from the healed man to his parents to confirm that he had indeed been born blind. They were so resistant to the possibility of healing that they thought it must be a trick. And then in our gospel, we have all of these questions about who Jesus is and how he got his power and whether he is a sinner and whether he is from God. And most everybody in our gospel today seems to think that you have to understand all the mechanics before you can believe the miracle. Through all of the questions, through all of the running back and forth, through all of the skepticism and resistance and fear, the man who was born blind keeps coming back with his simple testimony. I was blind, and now I see. Friends, I think the reason that the healing in our gospel shows up in verse 7 is so that we understand the very simple premise of what this gospel is teaching. God's love heals. Healing isn't glamorous. It involves mud, spit, dirt, and healing doesn't make rational sense. It invokes questions and confusions and chaos. But the lesson that unfolds in our gospel today is the lesson that if we keep our hearts open, And if we let our questions expand our imaginations instead of narrowing them, then we will recognize God's healing love in our midst. And the sight of healing will provoke our faith and nurture our hope. This is the witness of the man born blind. He might not understand exactly how he was healed, He might not know everything about who Jesus is, but at the end of the day, he knows in his body that he has been healed. He doesn't have all the answers, but he recognizes God's healing love. And this recognition fills him with trust and hope and wonder. It gives him faith. Friends, we are living in muddy days right now days that are filled with questions and confusion, days where it feels like we are the ones running around trying to catch up with the news and the needs around us. And our souls are hungry for healing. Our gospel reading today gives us two things to cling to in this time. One, the promise that God's love heals, and two, 
this encouragement to recognize and trust and appreciate the miracles of healing that we see around us. To that first lesson, trusting the promise that God's love heals, this means that we remember that there will be a far side to all of this. Even if right now we are living in this perpetual Ash Wednesday, where we are holed up in our homes, facing our mortality in new and intense ways, and even though there may yet be a good Friday for each of us and our world, where the bad news hit a crisis point and it feels like God has died, we can remember that Ash Wednesday and Good Friday have never been the end of the story. And pain and suffering and anxiety and grief and even death have never been the end of the story. We still have the healing promise of Easter, of God's new creation, of that tree of life with leaves for the healing of the nations. We can trust the promise that God's love will heal and that things will get better. And so instead of filling our days right now with despair, we can cling to that second lesson in our gospel, to recognize and trust and appreciate miracles of healing in our midst. We can look for all of the ways that God's love shows up to us as healing balm, even in this mud, even in this chaos. We can cling to the things that heal our spirits, like news of dolphins swimming the canals in Venice, or the generosity of this community in supporting local businesses and setting up a way to match up people in need with people who can help, or the news of landlords who are suspending evictions and utility companies who are suspending shutoffs, or arts organizations who are putting beautiful things out there into the world for free. Maybe this epic slowdown is bringing rest and healing to your previously over-busy life. Or maybe you are coming to a new appreciation of nature and the healing properties of fresh air and camaraderie with God's creation. Maybe you are watching with fascination the ways that the earth is healing itself while we humans are forced to get out of the way. Don't blink. These are all revelations of hope and healing around us. These are ways that God's glory is being revealed. Let these things provoke you to new faith. Don't close your heart. Resist your natural urge toward cynicism. Lean into these things. Let them restore you. Trust God's healing love enough to look for it and to ask for it and to offer it. Pray in these days fervently for all who are sick right now, all who are infected, all who are struggling to outlive hospitals who do not yet have room or resources for them, pray for healing. Pray for those who risk exposure every day to provide for others. Doctors and nurses and first responders, grocery store clerks, pharmacists, trash collectors, sanitation workers, mail carriers, research scientists, fast food drive through window workers. Keep praying and trust that God will heal. And then continue to offer yourself freely to be hope and healing for others. Use your fear and your frustration and your anger for good. Challenge leaders to continue this trajectory of becoming better servants of the common good. Call your anxious neighbors Offer them words of peace and hope. Give money where you can. Find creative ways to put laughter and beauty out there into the world. We may not 
know the ending of all of this, and we may not understand all the ways that God is present in the mud and in the chaos, but we can begin simply by trusting the testimony of the man in today's gospel who says, all I know is this, I was blind and now I see. Friends, all we know is this, our world hurts and God's love heals. May God's glory continue to be revealed to us in these difficult days. And may we find the faith to bear our testimony of healing and hope like a beacon into this world. Amen.